Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome all to Muhammad Qasim's channel. Uh, and we are back here discussing the dreams. Uh, inshallah, today our topic is about the situation of Pakistan before the great war of, uh, before the war of Ghazwa Hind occurs. Uh, now, this is a very important topic for the people of Pakistan, uh, particularly because the events that we are going to describe in this uh, video, uh, they are bound to happen in the next few years. Um, and uh, although there is no clarity to the time uh, of when these events will happen, uh, but it is likely that these events will occur, uh, in my opinion, in the next four to five years. Uh, before we begin, uh, a little bit of a summary of what we have been discussing in our previous uh, videos. Uh, we have talked about Muhammad Qasim's dreams about Imran Khan and how they've come true and the specific details about uh, the dreams that Muhammad Qasim saw about Imran Khan's events uh, from the beginning of his leadership, from his elections, all the way down to uh, his ousting from the government all the major events that occurred were already shown to Muhammad Qasim. Um, following on from that, we discussed the importance of Pakistan, uh, what is the future of Pakistan, uh, and we discussed that in the prospect of uh, looking at hadiths um, and uh, divine inspirations that other people have experienced. Uh, we have then looked on to the message that is in Muhammad Qasim's dreams, um, and we have uh, looked at the hadiths and the evidence uh, that exists in the hadiths about uh, dreams and how they're going to be important during the end times. Now, in our last video, we discussed about Malhamat al Kubra and we uh, emphasized that this is World War III. Um, looking at the hadiths about the events, uh, we also analyzed that a lot of the hadiths describe uh, an overview of the events that will happen. Uh, but Muhammad Qasim has seen a bit more detail about what actually happens uh, in the Malhamat al-Kubra. Uh, now, we concluded that the um, Ghazwa Hind uh, will be a part of Malhamat al-Kubra. And we've got the first stage of Malhamma Malham where the uh, Middle East uh, countries in there are uh, being devastated. Uh, we have the two castles of Islam, which is Turkey and Saudi Arabia, which fall. Uh, but while this destruction is happening in the Middle East, Pakistan, on the other hand, is progressing. And Pakistan progresses uh, to become a country that is self-sufficient uh, because it remains as the last castle of Islam. Uh, and from there, when Muslims or Islam is at its weakest point, uh, Islam will rise again from Pakistan. Now, in this video, we will look at uh, the events that will happen uh, according to Muhammad Qasim's streams uh, leading up to Ghazwa Hind. Now, Ghazwa Hind, as we discussed in the last video, was the turning point in uh, the fate of Muslims, where after the victory in Ghazwa Hind, uh, we have the um, East or not the East, but uh, the Middle East countries uh, will get liberated uh, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So looking uh, a little bit deeper into the uh, discussion, we uh, have determined two main things uh, from our analysis uh, of hadiths and divine inspirations. Uh, and these two main important things are that Pakistan was actually made uh, to serve a special purpose for Islam. Uh, the inspirations that uh, came, uh, there are dreams uh, from the, uh, of the founder of Pakistan that also connect with this. And the second more important point or more important um, relation is that Pakistan will play an important role closer to Kayama. Uh, we will explore those uh, items a little bit more in the context of Muhammad Qasim's streams. Um, now, there's been a request from uh, a lot of people that they want these videos to be in Urdu. Um, I understand that the Pakistani population uh, majority are Urdu speaking, uh, but we also have audience on this channel that belong to other countries. 
um, and to cater for that audience, we have to uh, ensure that we are covering their language. Uh, but anyway, what we will do is we will, uh, at the end of all of this, uh, all of these parts, we will introduce uh, a special topics in Urdu. Uh, and inshallah, that will help uh, an understanding for people uh, who are not able to understand English. Uh, but I do recommend, please come back, uh, look at the older videos. The subtitles are now available. Um, and uh, they they can be viewed with Urdu subtitle for, for those people. And I can see there's a member uh, over here. Uh, 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 sorry, bhai. Inshallah, jo main ye keh raha tha video mein ke, uh, in series ke baad jab ye series khatam hongi, uh, Inshallah, iske baad hum uh, Urdu mein bhi content uh, upload karenge. In series jo hai, uh, ye jo hum videos kar rahe hai, iska main purpose ye hai ke hum message puri dunia ki audience tak pahunchaye. Uh, aur Inshallah, aap baad mein aakar isko check kar lena. Video ko isme Urdu subtitles hongi. Purani videos may be vakke sa sa dal uh, But we will, we will do this, um, inshallah, uh, video in English, uh, so that we cater for our wider audience. Now, um, someone has also asked the question, when would World War Three start? I think you need to go back and look at our previous videos. Uh, and uh, make a connection. There's no timeline that we can conclude uh, about when these events will happen, uh, but it is likely that in the next five uh, to ten years, we will be witnessing all the major events uh, that have been described in hadiths uh, that are closer to Kayama. So, Uh, one other rationale that I wanted to present as part of this uh, video is that uh, we have had many discussions with uh, important political and social personalities in Pakistan. Um, these were these discussions were in the context of providing them information about Mohammed Qasim's dreams, um, and uh, on a periodic basis we have gotten back into touch with them. Um, most of the time, people have established a narrative or those. Individuals have established a narrative that uh, describe to us what will happen in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Uh, what is the future events that will happen so that we can keep a watch of these events uh, as they happen. Uh, so for you guys and for those people, this video serves as evidence um, that we have discussed these events already uh, and you are informed about these events and when they happen, you need to be the ones that are going to talk about Mohammed Qasim's streams publicly um, to increase the awareness, inshallah. Okay, now in the last uh, videos, we discussed about the importance of Pakistan. Uh, but there were two dreams of Mohammed Qasim that I forgot to mention. Uh, and this is, before we get into this uh, video, it is important that I do mention those two dreams. Um, in one of the dreams, Muhammad Qasim saw that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke to him, and uh, during the conversation, uh, he was left with a map. And as he opened the map, he saw the map of Khorasan, and he saw the country uh, to the east of Khorasan, which was Pakistan. And this is the country where the black flags will come from. Um, that was shown to him in his dreams. And the second thing is that the black flags, the army of the black flags, um, that uh, was also shown to Muhammad Qasim that that army is the Pakistan army. Now, the Pakistan army might have many other people who will join later on. Uh, uh, they might be people from all around the world. So we have to keep that in mind. But that's the inspiration that has been seen by Muhammad Qasim. So, uh, Today's topic is about the situation of Pakistan before Ghazwa Hind. And uh, uh, once again, if you want to have a good understanding about our videos, uh, it is important that you see our previous videos uh, because there is a connection from each video to the next video. Um, in this video, we are making an assumption that you have understood 
or watch the uh, video about the dreams um, about Imran Khan and how they've come true. And also, you've watched the video about the future importance of Pakistan uh, according to the hadiths and also divine inspirations. And this is a continuation from our uh, last topic, which was on uh, uh, sorry, uh, Malhamat al Kubra. Uh, we are now discussing what will be the major events that will happen in Pakistan uh, while Malhamat al Kubra is happening uh, on the other side, and Pakistan is preparing uh, to become a leader of the Islamic world, inshallah. So, they, uh, where are we? Here we go. So there are three important stages that uh, Pakistan will experience uh, before the event of Ghazwa Hin occurs. Um, now these three important stages have been broken down from a uh, main perspective of change of leadership. Um, before the change of leadership that will happen in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan's uh, will be going through turmoil, uh, there will be uh, economic degradation, there will be uh, turmoil in, in the country, there will be political instability, and there will also be some uh, attacks from enemy forces on Pakistan. Then comes the second part, which is the change of leadership. Uh, in this second stage, we have the implementation of the Islamic presidential system. Uh, and the army chief of Pakistan uh, becomes a key member or the key person who plays an important role in, in this change of leadership, in the transformation of Pakistan. Uh, and then Pakistan goes through a stage where true Islam of Prophet Muhammad wasallam is implemented in the country. And most importantly, shirk is removed. Shirk, uh, as we have discussed previously, uh, it's not just assigned to uh, a partner uh, when praying or remembering Allah, but there are a lot of activities. It's uh, about tawheed, it's about taqwa, uh, and uh, the scholars would be able to better explain to you the concept of shirk. Uh, but essentially, Pakistan goes through a stage of removing all major and minor forms of shirk from the country. And then comes a time of prosperity in Pakistan. Uh, where there, uh, by Allah's mercy, there's abundance of resources, uh, there's uh, abundance of money, uh, there's a significant economic development in Pakistan, um, such that the West is uh, surprised as to how Pakistan or the rest of the world uh, really is surprised how Pakistan has developed so quickly in a short amount of time. Uh, that Pakistan is also able to liberate Kashmir. Uh, during this period and uh, the progression that Pakistan uh, has, it becomes a leader in technologies and industries. So now we will exp uh, explore these uh, stages in a little bit more detail and we will uh, discuss uh, the specific things that will happen in Pakistan. Uh, now, when I am discussing these aspects uh, with you guys, uh, a lot of these dreams Muhammad Qasim has seen at different times in the past. He has seen, um, and they haven't occurred to him in sequence. Uh, so the events that I'm going to talk about now are not necessarily going to happen in sequence. Uh, but these are, uh, we have tried to put them in a way that is going to explain the situation a little bit more better for you. Uh, but nonetheless, while we are discussing this, Please don't assume that these are the sequence of events. Uh, it not necessarily the sequence of events, but these events are bound to happen uh, in the future for Pakistan. So first things that we look at is that Muhammad Qasim has seen uh, that Pakistan's economic situation uh, will worsen. Uh, Muhammad Qasim also saw that the dollar reserves go into negative. So Pakistan has uh, an amount of uh, dollar reserves that it always holds um, and uh, every country has that to ensure that it's able to make purchases, important purchases um, and Mohammed Qasim saw that the dollar reserves of Pakistan go into negative. Now the meaning of going into negative is that 
the dollar reserves are managed on a, on a banking system. So uh, the amount going up and down is not actually the physical amount that goes up and down, uh, but it's actually the uh, amount uh, that is offset. So like you might have your own bank account when sometimes you have paid for something, uh, you get a, a credit feature, your account goes into negative until more money comes in. Uh, so that's what Mohammed Qasim saw that the dollar reserves, essentially, they go into negative. So Pakistan uh, owes more than what Pakistan has uh, in its uh, reserve. Uh, then Mohammed Qasim saw that Pakistan and its army, uh, they continue to get trapped in difficulties. Um, and the army chief of Pakistan will try his best to elevate Pakistan from these difficulties, uh, but will fail. Pakistan uh, will then be uh, made into or attempted to be made into Thora Bora. Now, the reference of Thora Bora is uh, significant. Um, Thora Bora actually occurred in Afghanistan uh, during the Afghan war. Um, this is after the 9-11 events that happened. And Tora Bora was a uh, location in Pakistan, which was a terrorist hideout. Uh, so Muhammad Qasim actually saw in one of his dreams that uh, the, the first sign of his dreams coming true is that Pakistan uh, or people or countries or enemies of Pakistan will attempt to make Pakistan into uh, a Tora Bora state. Um, and that is uh, something that has already been occurring in in my personal point of view in the last um, five or so years or more than that we have already seen uh, that the situation of Pakistan where there's ter terrorist insurgency from within um, that has always been up, um, up there um, also when there were attacks uh, that were uh, that happened in Delhi um, or in Mumbai uh, sorry I'm not fully aware of the situation uh, but at that time, similar situation also occurred where Pakistan was um, being classed as a terrorist hideout location. So uh, the Tora Bora uh, is the first stage of when Muhammad Qasim's dreams will come true or the first sign of Muhammad Qasim's dreams coming true. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, then Muhammad Qasim saw that. Uh, uh, once again, assuming that you have already watched the videos about Imran Khan uh, and his uh, governance and his uh, failure uh, and his subsequent ousting, but Mohammed Qasim saw that Nawaz Sharif uh, returns to Pakistan after failure of PTI um, and then some international agents who are against Pakistan, they plot and they kill Nawaz Sharif. Now, this is a significant event that will uh, happen as per Muhammad Qasim's dreams. The army of Pakistan will try to save Nawaz Sharif, but they will fail. Um, and after this event, there will be a uh, significant unrest uh, within Pakistan. And this will be propagated by the enemies of Pakistan who will take advantage of the situation. Uh, so there will be chaos everywhere. There will be anarchy. Uh, everywhere in the country. Okay. Now, leading on from uh, that topic, uh, Pakistan's army will continue to face troubles after uh, some of these events that will happen in the country. Um, and due to the lack of finances and lack of fuel, uh, Pakistan uh, will not have enough mobility. The Pakistan army will not have enough mobility or ammo. Uh, a situation will come when Pakistan will have to decide uh, between paying debt installment or buying fuel, uh, at which point some of the army officers will suggest um, to take remittances from overseas Pakistanis. Um, and uh, Mohammed Qasim has seen that uh, it, within that same dream, the uh, time comes that the debt installment has to be paid. 
uh, and then the debt installment ends up being paid. Uh, but Pakistan then has no uh, reserves left um, to purchase other items. And this is when Mohammad Qasim says that he saw Army Chief of Pakistan uh, who begins implementing restrictions or quotas within the society. Uh, and then it leads on to public messages uh, coming on the media uh, that are uh, basically requesting people to adopt simplicity. Uh, so reducing their expenditure or reducing um, their uh, needs, essentially. Um, so this, according to these events, this gives you a picture of what the economic crisis will be in Pakistan, uh, where they are unable to purchase their regular uh, import-export items um, that are used for the population for their consumptions. Um, and this is something that we, uh, many uh, of the anchors and journalists at the moment, uh, they are hinting towards the situation occurring in Pakistan. Uh, as you know, the new government that's come on to its place, uh, it's been under significant pressure um, and it hasn't been able to stabilize the economy um, the way that I guess they themselves were uh, foreseeing to do it. And uh, according to that, we have seen a significant rise uh, in prices of items which has gone beyond affordability for uh, many people within Pakistan. Okay, then uh, there is a recent dream of uh, Muhammad Qasim. Uh, we have not uh, uploaded this at the moment, uh, but it is worth mentioning here that Muhammad Qasim saw that um, there is an operation that is conducted by India uh, on Pakistan to check Pakistan's uh, defense capability. Um, and there are about five or six missiles that are armed uh, that land into Pakistan and they cause some destruction. Uh, and soon after that, uh, Mohammad Qasim saw that there were some Indian airplanes um, that were also invading into Pakistan's uh, airspace. Uh, and Mohammad Qasim saw that the Pakistani army uh, does not respond uh, in the same or similar way or a much stronger way back to India uh, on this occasion. Um, then Mohammad Qasim in previous streams, he has seen that uh, uh, there are attacks that are made on Pakistan from uh, the uh, borders of Afghanistan uh, and the insurgents or the terrorists that come in these situations, they are trained uh, and they're heavily armored with modern equipment. Um, and once again, if you go back to the news, you will see in the last two years, there's been an increased insurgency in that. Now, all of these events are happening according to Mohammed Qasim's dreams when Pakistan is facing a significant economic crisis, uh, which creates a weak position for Pakistan, uh, enabling the enemies of Pakistan to uh, take advantage of the situation. Um, and then we have um, another significant dream of Muhammad Qasim, uh, where he actually saw that uh, uh, within this time when Afghanistan's attacks are happening, India also attacks, opens up multiple fronts on the Pakistani border. So there are multiple cities or areas in Pakistan uh, come under attack from India. Uh, and uh, in this uh, exercise, India is able to capture uh, or destroy a large part of Lahore. Uh, now, Mohammad Qasim saw that when these events are occurring, uh, there's a country with a red flag uh, that sends a warning to India to stop uh, or they will that country will destroy them. Uh, we believe or we understand, or this is my understanding once again, that this country most likely could be China, given the current geopolitical events that are happening. But having said that, the uh, Mohammed Qasim saw that the country of the red flag, uh, he they actually send their doctors into Pakistan uh, to support Pakistan, and the head of state also visits Pakistan uh, to show solidarity with Pakistan. Uh, and this head of state also seems to know Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Um, and while uh, these events that are happening in Pakistan about the attack that happens from India, um, 
Muhammad Qasim also saw that in one of those or many of those attacks, there are many people who are killed uh, in those attacks. And uh, when this is happening, because the, the country uh, or because there's an involvement of the country with the red flag, um, USA also comes out and tells India to stop these attacks. Um, now, there is another dream of Mohammed Qasim that I haven't put in here, but um, that dream also has a very significant place in our discussion today. Uh, in that dream, Mohammed Qasim saw that the uh, president or prime minister of US, Israel and India, uh, they are sitting together at a location and they create a plan for Palestine. Uh, this particular dream was before the Jerusalem um, embassy was classified as uh, uh, part of Israel. Uh, Jerusalem was classified as part of Israel and the embassy was established. Sorry uh, about that. The, uh, and then Muhammad Qasim saw in that same dream that once the plan for Palestine is established, um, then they also create a plan for Pakistan. Uh, and they mention in that dream, Muhammad Qasim saw or heard that um, there was a mentioning that now India will control Pakistan or India is set to control Pakistan. Um, following on from uh, that, uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that India will launch uh, biological warfare against Pakistan. Uh, these will be some of the cheaper tactics that will be taken by uh, the Indian side. And there will be many children that will fall ill and uh, there will be some that also die. Uh, because of this virus or biological uh, weapon that is used, uh, that will uh, make a huge impact on, on the children. Um, now, Mohammed Qasim also in 2016, uh, he saw that Pakistan's army should double its resources. Um, this was a dream that was that came in reference to the situation of Pakistan and how it has to prepare for the future for its significance. Um, and uh, Mohammad Qasim said that this dream, the message of the, this dream, was actually for the army chief of Pakistan. Uh, but in uh, recently, Mohammad Qasim saw. A follow-up of the stream and he saw that the time to uh, increase its army had uh, it, it's too late now or it's gone um, and it's not possible for Pakistan to double up its army uh, the way that it could have done if they had started uh, around 2016 2017 uh, which also confirms or in a way also indicates the closeness of this uh, war of Ghazwa Hind uh, that we are talking about. Um, so uh, another prominent uh, prominent thing to discuss. Uh, all right. Now, before also the change of leadership, uh, given the events that will happen and the attack that happens on the borders on Pakistan, Pakistan's economic situation, um, the army chief, Mohammad Qasim Saw, uh, is very frustrated and distressed. And upon this situation, um, uh, there will be uh, also an event that will occur, which is a very sensitive situation in the um, politics of Pakistan, uh, which will bring Pakistan very, very close to uh, imposition of martial law in the country. Uh, now, Mohammed Qasim has not seen that martial law gets implemented, uh, but he has seen that the events um, of the country and the political instability situation is so severe uh, that it is almost at the brink of the martial law being imposed. Now, once these events are happening uh, in Pakistan, this is where the change uh, occurs in Pakistan, and this change begins with the uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, who will appear in the dream of the army chief of Pakistan and testify that Muhammad Qasim's dreams are true and that he has not lied about his dream and the events that he has seen in his dreams will happen exactly as he has told or he has been shown. Uh, now once that happens, the army chief of Pakistan then meets with Muhammad Qasim. He learns about his dreams 
uh, and Mohammad Qasim narrates the important uh, events uh, and how Pakistan should prepare. Uh, and then comes uh, the time where army chief uh, begins planning according to Mohammad Qasim's dreams uh, to save Islam and Pakistan. Now, amongst the plans that are implemented within Pakistan, um, one of the things that happens is the implementation of a presidential system of governance. Um, now, this uh, has been notified as an Islamic presidential system, uh, but how it will be given the current structure of the uh, economy, or sorry, the current structure of the constitution, uh, difficult to say. Uh, but this is the future that will happen or occur in Pakistan. Amongst the changes that come in Pakistan, uh, following that change of leadership, the new presidential system uh, then abolishes shirk and all its forms from Pakistan. Uh, and they work towards implementing true Islam of Prophet Muhammad wasallam in Pakistan. Uh, the true Islam, its values, uh, its practices, and its rules are implemented all across. Um, and uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that all different sects of Islam or divisions of Islam, uh, they are abolished and one true Islamic practice uh, prevails within the country, which also goes on to be established throughout the world. Uh, but this begins in Pakistan. Some of the other things that also occur in Pakistan is that the interest system uh, of riba is uh, removed from the society and an Islamic banking system is implemented, which is free of interest. Uh, Pakistan also goes through removal of form, any form of oppression and terrorism within the country and true justice and equality uh, prevails in that period of change of leadership. Um, when this change of leadership happens, uh, the scenario that is seen by Muhammad Qasim is that of true leadership uh, that existed at the times of the Khulfai Rashidun. Uh, the true leadership in the sense that if people from the community want to hold a leader accountable for something, uh, they will not be oppressed or held down. They will have the right to ask or question uh, even the president of the country at that time. Um, now, once the change of leadership occurs in Pakistan, uh, by Allah's mercy, Pakistan goes through a significant phase of developing. Um, Muhammad Qasim saw that. Uh, Earth begins pouring its treasures out. Uh, Pakistan progresses by leaps and bounds in many industries. Uh, by leaps and bounds, the uh, what Mama Qasim has seen is that within a short amount of time, uh, Pakistan gains technological advancements um, and significant improvements in its societal structure, its civil structure. Um, and uh, it improves and becomes into a position where uh, it is really going to be a world leader. Uh, there will be peace and tranquility within Pakistan, um, and Allah will clear Pakistan by His mercy uh, from impurity and filth. Uh, when the rest of the world sees that Pakistan is progressing so significantly, um, then uh, India, allied with other countries, will uh, begin their military campaigns uh, against Pakistan. Uh, and at this point, uh, also Muhammad Qasim has seen that Pakistan becomes strong enough uh, that it frees and liberates uh, Kashmir. Um, then Muhammad Qasim saw that while all of these events are happening in Pakistan and Pakistan is progressing uh, in prosperity, uh, on the other side, in the Middle East, there's destruction happening. Uh, the World War Three is rampant over there. Um, and at that time, the war then comes towards Pakistan. Uh, now, when the war comes towards Pakistan, the war that Muhammad Qasim has seen that occurs is Ghazwa Hin. And this war is not instigated by Pakistan. It's not started by Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan does not initiate this war. 
uh, but Pakistan actually defends itself. So this war is actually imposed upon Pakistan uh, by the enemies um, that are uh, in the uh, Middle East and also on the other side where uh, India uh, begins preparing its campaigns against Pakistan. Uh, and Mohammed Qasim has seen that this war is actually for the survival of Islam. Um, and that's why it becomes very important for Pakistan uh, to be structured in a strong position uh, to defend Islam. Um, Muhammad Qasim then saw that this is when the help or Allah's help comes with the black jet fighters. Um, and uh, then Muhammad Qasim saw that many Muslims, because they understand the significance of, of Ghazwa Hind, according to the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many Muslims leave their countries, leave their comfort, and they travel to Pakistan to establish and rebuild Islam. Uh, and uh, Muhammad Qasim also says that he saw Pakistan's population had increased to more than 700 million in a short amount of time. Now, to give you an understanding about what that is, that is about uh, two and a half, uh, not two and a half yet, well, more than three times the population of Pakistan right now. Um, so it's, it's a significant number of people that actually uh, come into Pakistan. Uh, and after this, obviously, the event of Ghazwai Hind occurs. Um, and uh, as I have discussed in my last video, uh, that after the campaign in Ghazwai Hind completes, Pakistan then jumps into the Middle East and then liberates the uh, lost uh, countries uh, in the war. And uh, it then is able to, sorry. So Pakistan then liberates the Muslim countries that are lost in the Middle East and uh, it then uh, establishes or re-establishes Islam after uh, defeating Russia and uh, USA, the two other superpowers that exist um, and becomes a world leader in, in, uh, in the global geopolitics scenario. Now, the topic of Ghazwa Hind, what will happen in the war itself, how it will uh, occur, how will Pakistan go through the war, how the uh, victory will occur, and what are the specifics of that. We will, inshallah, discuss that in our next session. Uh, we will also look at some of the hadith references that exist about Ghazwa Hind and uh, make uh, an understanding about uh, the importance of this time and how that connects to Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Now, before we close off the discussion here, it is important that our audience, especially from Pakistan, realizes the importance of Pakistan. Uh, as far as Muhammad Qasim's dreams are concerned, we are looking at the events that will happen in Pakistan, uh, but the importance of Pakistan uh, in the future of Islam uh, that has to be realized, that has to be understood by the people of Pakistan because it is the people of Pakistan that will uh, re-establish Islam. Uh, and uh, this is something that is very profound, very significant. Uh, so I, I hope that you are able to uh, ponder upon these videos about these dreams. All of the information that I've mentioned to you, it has already been uploaded on Muhammad Qasim's channel. It's available. Um, and uh, the future of what's going to happen, uh, according to Muhammad Qasim's dreams, uh, once again, there are uh, videos or, of his dreams that are uh, available online for you to have a look at. Uh, before we close off, we will look at uh, some of the questions. Okay. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all those who have said Islam wa alaikum. Okay. Will India capture or destroy Lahore? So, according to the dream of Muhammad Qasim, um, he has seen that um, while Pakistan is going through a weak stage um, where economic and politics are weak, 
army is not able to mobilize itself uh, when the attack happens from India uh, it happens on mer multiple locations uh, not just Lahore uh, but because Lahore is the major city close to the border uh, it falls victim to uh, the advancement of the Indian army um, and when the Indian army advances um, because of the missiles and the other attacks that are happening a part of Lahore is destroyed not all of Lahore a part of Lahore is destroyed and a part of Lahore is also captured uh, by India and that remains in uh, India's possession for some time uh, so that is what Muhammad Qasim has seen according to his dreams a uh, country with red flag tells India to stop killing which country is this um, we Muhammad Qasim has not seen which country this will be um, but as I mentioned in the video that it is my understanding uh, based on the geopolitical situation that exists today that it is most likely that this country is um, China uh, being close proximity to Pakistan and India and uh, having uh, already having some sort of an issue between uh, China and India this is what we can deduce but Allah knows best uh, we don't know exactly which country this is Muhammad Qasim just saw uh, that it was a country with a red flag okay Okay, there's some discussion about World War Three after the dissolution of Turkey. We'll launch. Uh, yes, that is right. So after the Malhama that happens, there are many ahadiths uh, that describe about the Malhama uh, and its connection with the future events that happen. We will discuss those in detail in a future uh, future uh, discussion session uh, when we discuss about the Jal, his coming, and the war associated with the Jal, uh, but the after the Malhama essentially the war with the Jal begins uh, so you could say that it's World War four but it's really battle against the Jal um, uh, Allah will protect Islam whoever helps and follow Islam will be protected it's not Pakistan it's Islam Yes, Mr. Faraz Iqbal Khan, that is uh, correct. I concur, I agree with you. Um, it is Allah will protect Islam and because Pakistan will be in a position where it has established Islam, true Islam, and it, it, it begins to um, establish the Islam that existed at the time of the Khulfai Rashidun uh, or Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is when uh, as I mentioned in the video, Pakistan really starts progressing. Now imagine a country or imagine yourself uh, where you have run out of money, you have debt uh, on yourself, you have a house to pay for, you have a business to pay for and you've run out of money, you've injured yourself, you've lost a leg, you've lost an arm, you can't do anything <clears throat> and all of a sudden you get the ability uh, by Allah's help that you are able to get your legs and arms and you're able to get so much revenue or so much help that you not only pay off your debt but you start really progressing uh, so this is something that will truly be divine help from Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah for Pakistan and uh, this is the the reason why it actually happens is because Pakistan implements true Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that happens after the change of leadership in Pakistan. What is the profession of Qasim? Uh, Muhammad Qasim, Qasim Bhai does not have a profession. Uh, I, he, he does not have an official profession, but uh, like many people in Pakistan, he's engaged in some business activity um, uh, that helps him cover his day-to-day -day expenses um, and that's what we know about Muhammad Qasim uh, another question once again uh, we have talked to uh, Qasim Bhai and we have asked him to come online 
but because he's an extremely shy person, uh, he's not comfortable coming online. Um, and uh, it was only <clears throat> before in the past that he got the media opportunity and he went onto media to discuss his dreams. The, the videos of those are available online. Uh, but uh, at this stage, he has still mentioned to us that he's not uh, feeling comfortable to come online. Um, and that's why uh, we are here to narrate or uh, discuss the dreams uh, on his behalf uh, to you and to the rest of the world. Okay. Part of Lahore captured for few months. Um, I'm not sure about the timeline for this, uh, but obviously Pakistan does get back uh, Lahore. Um, I don't know, or based on Mahmoud Qasim's dream, how long that happens for. Uh, inshallah, we'll try to get uh, an answer for this question. Uh, but what I understand is that that part uh, stays captured for uh, a period of time. Uh, in Pakistan. It's only when the change of leadership occurs, perhaps, uh, that part of uh, Lahore is uh, taken back. Okay, what happened to China in the Ghazwahin, World War Three, the Jal phase? Will Islam have fight against China? Um, <clears throat> To be honest, Mohammed Qasim has not seen any specific events about China. Um, there is a dream about uh, uh, economic buildings falling. Uh, uh, this is a dream where blocks occur. I'm not sure if that dream is significant for um, Chinese buildings falling or uh, other world buildings falling. Um, we don't really know what China's role is going to be in the future in the world war. Uh, but based on the dreams that Mohammed Qasim has already seen, because there is an absence of China, uh, we can only assume that maybe China uh, will not be as strong as it is now um, in the future. Uh, and when or uh, how exactly that happens, we, we don't really know. Uh, but as per the um, event that happens when the red flag country attacks or not attacks or a red flag country tells India um, that uh, stop your activity. Uh, Mohammed Qasim also said that in that time that red flag country also uh, takes losses. So uh, whether they are economic losses or financial losses uh, or uh, military losses, uh, we not specifically don't know what those losses are, but Mohammed Qasim said that that country with red flag also takes losses because it has supported Pakistan. Uh, so we don't know uh, specifically what will happen. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, as per Muhammad Qasim's stream, uh, true Islam spreads throughout the world and many people convert into Islam uh, because they see how peaceful the uh, true Islam of Prophet Muhammad is. Uh, I'm very sure that Hindus are aware of Ghazwa Hind. This is a question from our brother here. Is Ghazwa Hind hadith really popular among Pakistani and Hindustani? Does Hindus know about this? Um, there are actually many uh, Hindu pundits that uh, are also online and they have uh, made significant uh, talks about Ghazwa Hind. Uh, perhaps you can go and find them online, but one of my friends recently shared with me um, uh, some of the views of popular pundits in, in India. Uh, and even they, from their knowledge, they are uh, concerned about Ghazwa Hind and they also foresee that this event might happen in the, in the near future. So they are, um, the views of one of the pundits that I saw in the video, uh, he said that Ghazwa Hind is coming after Ghazwa Hind if it happens, uh, Hindus will have no place to to hide. Uh, so we must do 
what needs to be done uh, like China did to the Uyghur Muslims. We must also do the same to the Muslims in India. Uh, this was a point held by the one of the pundits uh, of whose video I have seen. So I can confirm that they know and they are aware and they're very much concerned about this event and what the future uh, will hold uh, as per this event for them. Okay. Well, Jazakallah Khair for uh, joining us today. Thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, learning more about Muhammad Qasim's streams. Uh, the one more important part that you can do uh, about making these streams um, um, sort of reach out to your family members, to your friends, uh, spread them to your uh, important people within your community your religious scholars uh, or your politicians uh, because the real uh, important part of the or the work that has been tasked to Muhammad Qasim is to actually spread these streams um, to the entire Muslim Ummah and as you can see that Muhammad Qasim streams have important messages uh, not just about the events that will occur but it, these dreams they are reiterating or they are confirming that the time of Qayama is very near to us. In fact, it is within our generation uh, that we may even experience this. Allahu alam. Uh, but uh, the message needs to be spread. Uh, so please do share uh, these streams with your friends and family uh, and your uh, community where possible. Jazakallah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.